Hi, thank you for tuning into my presentation. Uh, my name is Katie Dennison, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Ohio Division of Wildlife. I'm excited to talk today about the carnivores that have recently made a comeback in Ohio. Uh, let's start out with a little bit of history. Uh, so at the turn of the 19th century, Ohio was largely forested, and there were 17 carnivore species that occurred in the state at that time. Then between the 1800s and early 1900s, as Ohio's human population expanded uh, and habitat was converted for agriculture, Ohio lost many native species, which included eight native carnivores, uh, the gray wolf, cougar, black bear, bobcat, lynx, river otter, fisher, and martin. So since the 1900s, four of those carnivores that were lost have returned to the state. And for this presentation, I'm going to focus on those four species. Uh, they are river otter, bobcat, black bear, and fisher. And I'll talk about the circumstances that led to their return and what their current statuses are. So records indicate that black bear, bobcat, and fisher were extirpated uh, sometime in the late 1800s, um, while otter were extirpated from the state by the early 1900s. And these losses were largely due to the loss of forested habitat, which is important in this region for all four of those species. And in addition, the loss of wetlands and degradation of riparian habitat were important factors um, that impacted uh, river otter at that time. And lastly, unregulated hunting and trapping um, contributed to the loss of those already struggling populations. Of course, these losses weren't limited to Ohio. So as an example, these maps are showing the changes that occurred in the distribution of river otter um, between the time of early European settlements on the left and the 1970s on the right. And bobcats, black bears, and fisher were also lost um, from large portions of their native ranges during uh, the same time period. So there are many circumstances that led to each of these species returning, um, and in the rest of the presentation I'll highlight some of the important milestones for each species. However, none of these returns would have been possible without several changes that occurred uh, both in Ohio and in North America in general um, that helped to create an environment where these species could once again thrive. Uh, so these changes were essentially reversing or mitigating some of the issues that led to their loss in the first place. Uh, so probably the biggest factor influencing these returns were changing to habitat. So forest cover uh, began to increase in Ohio in the 1940s after reaching a low point. And additionally, uh, regulations like the Clean Water Act were enacted, um, which helped to protect aquatic resources that species like river otter rely on. Uh, and then state and federal protection of wildlife species was also an important factor. So this included um, putting into place laws to protect wildlife, which Ohio has been doing since 1829, um, and also having people uh, who can enforce those laws. Uh, and last but not least is the establishment of funding mechanisms to support the management of wildlife as well as protection and management of habitat for those species. Um, so that includes things like Pittman-Robertson Act, and uh, the Ohio State Income Tax Checkoff Program. So uh, getting into the specific species, I'll start out with river otter. Uh, they did historically occur in rivers and other wetland areas throughout Ohio, uh, but as I mentioned earlier, they were thought to be extirpated by the early 1900s. And otter have made a great combat come back in Ohio uh, due to reintroduction efforts that were conducted by the Ohio Division of Wildlife um, starting in 1986 and they ran through 1993. Uh, during that time there were 123 river otters that were trapped in Arkansas and Louisiana and brought to four watersheds in uh, eastern Ohio. And those watersheds were chosen based on the availability of high quality otter habitat in those areas. We really chose the best of the best locations to bring them to. Um, Additionally, otter relocations have occurred in many other states. So this map um, is showing the movement of river otters in the United States. And since the 1970s, over 4,100 otters were translocated to 22 states. And that included uh, translocations to Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Kentucky. So in addition to our own reintroduction efforts, uh, these reintroductions in neighboring states have likely contributed at least to some degree to the success of river otter in Ohio. During the reintroduction process, otters were given surgically implanted radio transmitters, um, which allowed biologists to monitor their survival and collect information on home range size, movements, and diet. 
uh, initial reintroductions were successful um, and um, after that we started to see populations expand out from those release watersheds and over the next de decade the division implemented uh, population monitoring um, using techniques like aerial track surveys and bridge surveys and as well as uh, tracking observation reports that come from the public. By 2002, biologists estimated there were uh, over 2,700 otter present in the state. And so at that time, otter removed for, from Ohio's list of endangered and threatened species, um, but monitoring efforts continued. Then in 2005, Ohio's first modern day otter trapping season was implemented. Uh, harvest was limited to 43 counties in Eastern Ohio um, with both zone and statewide bag limits for each trapper. Uh, trappers were also required to report harvest and we encourage voluntary submission of carcasses, um, which we use to collect age and reproductive information, um, which is then used in an agent harvest population model, which was developed by uh, OSU recently. Uh, so we can use this information to track the population trajectory um, and based on harvest results we can also get some information on otter distribution throughout the state. So this map is showing the distribution of harvest by watershed in the first two years after harvest was expanded to be statewide um, which occurred in 2018. So harvest is most common near the original release site watersheds, which are outlined in black on the map. Um, but we do also see some harvest in Northwest and Southwest Ohio, which is uh, pretty far from those original release sites. So that brings us to the current status of river otter. Uh, we continue to monitor river otter through harvest and surveys. Uh, bridge surveys are conducted uh, at 422 sites across the state. Uh, staff visit these sites annually uh, in the winter and they walk 300 meters upstream and 300 meters downstream at the site. Um, and they make note of any river otter sign that is observed. So from that, um, we can get an idea of um, what's happening with the population. So this graph here is showing the proportion of bridge sites where a sign was detected um, each year from 2000 to 2020. Um, so the red line is showing uh, bridge sites in northeastern Ohio, and the blue is showing bridge sites in the rest of the state. So we do see a lot of variation from year to year, um, but overall we see an increasing trend in observations, um, which indicates an increase in otters in the state. So we can also get an idea of distribution from these surveys. Uh, so this map is showing the proportion of surveys um, where sign was detected at each uh, bridge site over the course of five years. So similar to our results from harvest, detection rates indicate that river otter uh, remain most abundant near those original release site watersheds, uh, but we do also see a fair number of detections in central and western Ohio. And lastly, we do still use information on otter sightings submitted by the public uh, to add to our knowledge of otter distribution in the state. Um, and this is particularly useful in areas uh, where otter are still uncommon, uh, so like central and western Ohio. So moving on to bobcats, uh, they also historically occurred throughout forested areas of Ohio, uh, but they were extirpated by 1850. In 1946, the first modern day sighting of a bobcat in Ohio was recorded, um, and after that, sporadic sightings continued throughout the mid-1900s as bobcats dispersed from populations in neighboring states. Um, and then in, re in response to those occasional sightings, uh, bobcats were listed as endangered when Ohio's list of endangered and threatened species was established in 1974. And since that time, sightings reported by the public have been the primary method that we've used to track bobcat distribution and abundance in the state. Uh, first through the use of sightings postcards and more recently uh, through a reporting page that's available on the division's uh, website and app. Prior to the year 2000, the division never received more than five confirmed sightings in a year, but in the 2000s, confirmed sightings of bobcats started to steadily increase and have continued to do so since. So this graph is showing the total confirmed sightings that are reported each year, and the different colors represent the different methods used to confirm sightings. So most confirmed sightings are trail camera pictures or animals that were killed on the road. And at the same time as sightings were increasing, the distribution of confirmed sightings started to expand 
to include uh, additional counties in southeast Ohio and further out. So this map, series of maps is showing the number of confirmed sightings by county for five-year periods from 2001 to 2020. Uh, based on the consistent growth in the number and the distribution of sightings observed over the previous decade, um, bobcats were downlisted threatened in 2012. So around this same time, the division was conducting a number of research projects to better understand the bobcat population in Ohio. And based on the results of uh, that research, as well as monitoring and evidence of a, an established bobcat population in Southeast and Southern Ohio, uh, bobcats were removed from Ohio's list of endangered and threatened species in 2014. Uh, so this slide just lists some of the research that has been done on bobcats in Ohio over the years, um, and includes a trail camera study uh, that looked at bobcats cat occupancy in southeast Ohio, um, a GPS collar monitoring research project, um, which provided information on home range, habitat use, and mortality. Uh, so this map here is showing some of the location data that was collected from three bobcats that were collared in Noble County. And the division has also collected several hundred uh, roadkill bobcats over the past two decades. And samples collected from these carcasses provided a lot of information on various things like uh, age structure and reproductive status in the population, as well as uh, genetic structure of the population and uh, diet information. So where we're at today with bobcats, uh, this map is showing the total number of confirmed bobcat sightings by county. Um, so sightings remain most uh, common in southeast Ohio and southern Ohio, but we do have occasional sightings throughout the rest of the state. Um, bobcats are no longer listed, but there's no harvest permitted, and we continue to monitor bobcats both through sightings, um, but as sightings have become more common, um, we've also started to use some uh, standardized uh, survey methods like our annual uh, bow hunter survey to monitor the population. Uh, moving on to black bear, uh, they historically occurred in forested and wetland areas of the state, uh, but the last historic record of a bear in Ohio was in Paulding County in 1881. Similar to bobcats, occasional sightings of black bears were reported in Ohio throughout the mid-1900s as individuals dispersed from populations in neighboring states. Um, but in 1993, as sightings were becoming a more regular occurrence, uh, the division implemented an official procedure for tracking and investigating black bear sightings in the state. And then in 1995, based on consistent, although few, confirmed sightings each year, uh, black bear were listed as endangered on Ohio's list of endangered and threatened species. Um, and since then, sightings remain the main method that we use to track black bear populations in Ohio. So this graph is showing the number of confirmed sightings in orange and uh, unconfirmed sightings in blue for each year. Um, so we do see a generally increasing trend, um, particularly in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, in recent years, uh, we have a little bit more of a, a stable trend in confirmed sightings, but um, we are still regularly seeing sightings each year. So similar to bobcats and river otters, uh, the division has invested in various black bear research and monitoring projects over the years uh, to try and better understand this population. Uh, so for example, in November 2015, a male black bear was fitted with a GPS collar in Benton County. Um, that bear remained in the same area within about 12 square miles of his capture location um, throughout the winter until the following spring. Uh, so the picture on the left is showing the entrance to a den site that he stayed in during that time. Um, but then in mid-April 2016, he took off and headed east. Uh, so this map is showing um, his route that he took after leaving. Um, he traveled about 150 miles east uh, into West Virginia um, before eventually settling in Tucker County, West Virginia. So um, when thinking about bears in Ohio, I think it's important to keep in mind the long distances that bears will travel like this. Um, and that's particularly true for young male bears um, who will travel long distances when they're setting out to establish their own home range. Um, and they generally won't settle in an area unless a female is present. 
So while we do have a number of sightings that are reported each year, most of the evidence we have from roadkill bears as well as trail camera pictures uh, suggests that the large majority of uh, bears that are seen in Ohio are transient male bears uh, or dispersing young males um, and aren't actually resident animals. However, there is some evidence of resident females in uh, the northeast corner of the state. Uh, sow with cubs was documented in Ashtabula County in 2016 and was consistently seen in the same area over multiple years. Uh, so this isn't the first documentation of a sow with cubs uh, because we have occasionally confirmed sightings over the years, um, but most have not been consistently observed over multiple years like this one. Um, unfortunately, a female was hit on the road in Ashtabula County in December of 2021, so it's not yet clear if that was the only female in that area or if there may be a second resident. Um, however, sows with cubs have recently been documented in other counties, uh, Trumbull and Jefferson County, still up in that, that northeastern Ohio area. And today, black bears remain state listed as endangered, and there's no harvest permitted. Uh, so this map here is showing the total number of confirmed sightings uh, by county that have been documented since 1993. Um, so sightings have been documented throughout eastern Ohio, but are most common in northeast Ohio. Um, and we continue to monitor bears through, through sightings submitted from the public. And the last species I'll talk about is the newest returnee, which is a fisher. Uh, fisher were also extirpated from the state by 18. So fisher are another species that is recolonizing Ohio by dispersing from growing populations in neighboring states. Um, and those populations in neighboring states were aided by reintroduction efforts. Um, so this map is showing uh, changes in fisher distribution over the years. So the largest area with the diagonal hatching is the historic range of fisher. And then the smallest area way up north with the cross hatching um, is their contracted range from the late 19th and early 20th century. And then the shaded region um, is fisher range as of 2012. And lastly, those white dots, uh, those are all reintroduction sites. So they were reintroduced into multiple sites in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And both of those efforts were successful and those populations have continued to grow since then. So Ohio had our first modern day sighting in 2013. Um, since that time, we've had 15 confirmed sightings, although we don't have any evidence of reproduction occurring in the state just yet. And in 2019, uh, fisher were listed as a special interest species in Ohio. Uh, there's no harvest permitted and sightings have been confirmed in six counties shown on the map here, all in Northeast Ohio. And um, like black bears, we continue to monitor them through sightings reported by the public. So, um, well, there's a lot of good news with these species, the return of carnivores certainly presents challenges as well. Um, so there are reports of nuisance or problem animals that do come up. And we sit, see situations like bears destroying beehives or getting into wildlife feeders and bobcats can cause problems for people who keep poultry. Um, so while some of these situations are unavoidable and we expect for these issues to continue to come up as these species become more common, uh, there's also a learning curve for the public uh, in learning how to mitigate conflict. So the Division of Wildlife can serve as a resource um, and offer advice to individuals or communities um, to, to help as these situations come up. And there are also challenges associated with the habitat that's available in a densely populated state like Ohio. So all of these species show some degree of avoidance of urban or highly fragmented areas and roadkill can be a significant cause of mortality. So making sure that we have a good understanding of how these factors impact each population is gonna be important to informing future conservation of these species. So in conclusion, we've come a long way, in a relatively short time, uh, but there's still more progress to be made. Uh, so we hope to continue to have more positive news to share about Ohio's carnivores in the coming years. Um, and whenever I put together a presentation like this, I'm always struck by uh, just the sheer amount of information that we gain from citizen participation, citizen science. So I'll end this presentation with a call to action to continue to report sightings of these and other rare and recolonizing species. Um, often in the early days of recolonization, um, citizen reports are one of the best sources of information that we have. 
So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.